guys, good! Hello and welcome back to the ESL Meisterschaft Grand Final Day! That is a building as you can see on the screen. My name is Sona as you can't see anywhere. And I'm joined by Excoundra. Iguanas won the last game. They are going through to the Grand Finals and they will be facing up against the winners of this next matchup. Eyes on you versus the mysterious monkeys. Excoundra. Same. It's insane, man. It's insane in the brain and in the membrane as well. Both of those. It's insane in all of those things. And uh, yeah, I'm fully behind everything that you stand for sona so uh yeah totally I'm on board with that down at the moment, man. everything that you also sit down and stand up for not sure you want to know everything i sit down for but we are going to introduce our do you sit, teams you sit down you sit down for special things yes to be at my computer oh this is uh eyes on you the only team at this tournament not to have won one of the cups are leading up to these uh grand final days they are perhaps the underdogs in this matchup against the Mysterious Monkeys, who recently have been on quite a run of form. Yeah, so the Mysterious Monkeys are one of those teams that honestly have just looked fantastic for the sort of the last couple of weeks in the ESL Meisterschaft. And uh, I wouldn't put it past them to be potential favourites to take this whole thing. Iguana definitely looking very strong against what were the favourites, but Mysterious Monkeys are the kind of team that you ne can never count out in any given situation. Oh, definitely. I think... Uh... Eyes on you, definitely uh, just a squad that are quite consistently pretty darn strong. They will get everyone. Who's, oh, please. Oh, pl uh, if you're going to dab, firstly, at least do it properly. You don't dab onto your forehead. And secondly, please don't dab. Please. Uh, we, we are not the casters on screen. So before everyone says there's sync issues that aren't, those guys are much more informative and interesting than we are. Uh, so if you want to watch them, you can jump across to the German stream, which I believe is ESL underscore summoners in. Now, getting into picks and bans, we have to assume pretty quickly in this game. Anything you expect to see kind of uh, deliberately picked or banned away on 622? Well, I actually wasn't sure because a lot of what we saw from that last game was kind of beyond what I expected. Um... But honestly, yeah, I think maybe similar kind of things. Syndra being picked or banned, especially in every game. Rise probably up there as well. Uh, so yeah, I think um, I think there's a couple of things that we should keep our eyes out here for. Sorry, I was finishing a game of Hearthstone. I'm done now. <laughs> I thought that might be the case. Anyway, Mysterious Monkeys, as you can see, their lineup there. It's now left the screen, so I can't run through it because I can't remember them off the top of my head. Let me see if I've got a bracket somewhere that will... Uh would tell me who is actually in the Mysterious Monkeys lineup. If not, I'm sure Excoundrel can find out. As my uh, yeah, I'll have a quick look on the Bracket website, and it's not telling me, so fortunately, no. Okay, so we can't find out. Anyway, that was Mysterious Monkeys. This is Eyes on You, obviously getting their prep ready for the draft phase. I know that Broken Blade plays for Mysterious Monkeys, so we got one. We got one of the five. And as you know, in League of Legends, that's all it takes to carry a team sometimes, just a one in five. So... Uh, in this in this particular matchup, Eyes on You are the kind of team. If we look at how they've done and um, previously performed, they are not they never they've never actually won a um, a cup. So they've always come close. They got to the semi final cup one. They got to the final cup two. They got to the final cup three. They got to uh, I think they actually got knocked out in the first round. No, they got knocked out in the second round of cup four, and then they got to the second round cup five as well and then they actually ended up going through the group stages and getting second to uh, iguana esports as iguana beat them and then they beat them again in the finals so you would say that given the track record against iguana eyes on you are slightly less favored however mysterious monkeys they beat Euronix pretty convincingly. And then let's have a look how, the, how they performed throughout the cups so mysterious monkeys they uh, got knocked out in the first round of cup one they got knocked out in the second round of Cup 2. They got knocked out in the second round of Cup 3. They got knocked out in the second round of Cup 4. And they got got through to the finals and won Cup 5. So if you look at how they transitioned from that to the group phase, you were right in the way that you said that this was basically a building of form. And now they've come to the absolute... Um, sort of, I guess, epitome of their, their playing prowess. And this is probably their best chance ever if, if trend continues to potentially take the whole thing. So uh, the thing with Mysterious Monkeys getting knocked out in the second round consistently was every single round they were facing up against Euronix. So you like you can argue they actually had a really difficult job in those first yeah. four cups because like they, they lost to Euronix. Oh, no, sorry. The first cup, they lost to Pate Jules, who is an, oh, it's an Austrian team. After that, they lost to... 
Euronics, 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 and then they beat Euronics to get through to the finals, and that's the time they won. So Euronics were kind of there standing at the gates, stopping the gatekeepers, stopping Mysterious Monkeys being able to get through to those finals. And they they actually beat Euronics out in the group phase as well, knocking Euronics down to that lower bracket. So they will face up against Iguana if they get through to the finals. Of course, Eyes on You will want to be the uh, deciders of their own fate and will be looking to beat out those mysterious monkeys. We should be getting into draft in just a couple of seconds. Time. If you were to call this one right now, right here, Excandrew, who would you call it for? Probably mysterious monkeys, if I'm completely honest. Like, Eyes on You essentially sort of clamoured their way. They've always almost been second best in most situations. They're a very good team, but they're going up against mysterious monkeys who beat Euronics Gaming, who traditionally always beat Eyes on You. And then Mysterious Monkeys have had this big run of form recently, so I'd probably be going down that run. I would not be surprised if that is the case. I think we're just uh, waiting on perhaps some earbud issues or something before these guys get ready to uh, get into the action. Uh, who names these teams? No idea. No clue whatsoever who names them. I assume they name themselves. Mysterious Monkeys, in my opinion, is actually a relatively good name for a team. If I were to name a team, Mysterious Monkeys would be pretty high up there. Eyes on you... Not 100% sure about it. I think it's a little bit meme -y, but... Meme-y? Yeah, or creepy? Like, well, yeah, creepy. Cre yeah, creepy is better, isn't it? It's, um, have you... You know the song, every, you know, every step you take, every move you yeah. make? Yeah. That is the creepiest song when you actually think through the lyrics. It's basically someone saying, everywhere you go, I will be stalking you and watching you. Also, I, I find it amusing they're using lion cast mouse pads. Because lion every cast did not get through. Every take. Yeah. Every move soda makes... Please. I'll be something soda. Which one are we talking about? The police version or the, the LL Cool J version? <laughs> police. Everyone likes yeah, it yeah. more than LL cool Yeah, J, good, 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 man. The police version's better. Uh, so, waiting on Pixel Fans to start on up. Just uh, these teams, of course, fighting out for that challenger spot as well. That's a, a big thing for this tournament. They get a challenger series qualification spot to the winners. Euronics out of the running for it now. Iguana Esports looking like the front runners in all honesty, although Mysterious Monkeys and Eyes on You will definitely have something to say about that. Just so you know, Bilt Informat mit Computer Bild Spiel. Spiel. Europa's Gross Spiel Magazine. It's the best computer magazine of in the Spiel. Europe, of... I want to say. So Spiel is, is play, is it? No, Ich Spielen. I don't know what Spiel is. I think Spiel is either read or play. Uh, no, read is Lisa. Lieren? Lieren? Something along those lines. That is Gespiel, I think very Gespiel, young child. I think Gespielen means to play. Look it up, look it up. I'm trying to learn German at the moment, but I'm very bad at it. I can say things like, I am bread, or that is bread. Yeah, Spielen means play, I was okay, right. Okay, so is, is Le oh. Lies, Liesen? Is uh, read, I think. I'm going to look it up. I'm going to look it up on Google Translate. Oh, I mean, apparently, it means game. So in this context, I think it means gaming, gaming magazine. magazine probably. Yeah, okay. There we go. Thanks, chat. You're well, number no, one. No, no, it was us. It was us. It was all us, man. Yeah. We worked that out. Yeah, le lesser is read. Like L-E-S-E. So you glesser. You glesser? I know one phrase in German, but I'm not going to say it on no, stream. No, please don't say it. Please don't say it. We're here to pick some bands. Eyes on you on the blue side. Mysterious Monkeys on the red. And Rise and Fiora have been locked away here by Eyes on you. Mysterious Monkeys getting rid of the Oriana and the Poppy. So if you've missed so far, we had a 2-1 uh, best of three series, which I believe Iguana Esports took with a nice sort of Ash-orientated gameplay. And we're going to see Fiora being banned out here against Broken Blade, so he's not going to get his chance to play uh, that particular champion. Oriana and Poppy being banned away, like you said, Sona. What do you think the final ban's going to be? Does it have to be Syndra? I think it's got to be Syndra, yeah, I think right? Syndra is sort of the obvious ban here, in all honesty. You could also go for... If you're, if you're banning out the Poppy, you can look towards that top lane a bit more. But it's going to be the Rengar locked away here from Zani. So not going to see any Rengar play today. Eyes on you now have first pick and have quite a plethora of options to work their way through. Yeah, with Syndra being up and available, though, you would imagine that Eyes on you might gravitate towards that. So I, I would be personally tempted to go straight for the Syndra in this case. She's just so strong in most situations. But no, they're going to go for the Karma. They value that Karma support pick over the Syndra. 
I, I like Karma's support. Uh, I think the Syndra is a little bit stronger. And I think you, like, we mostly agree with that. I think Syndra does give your team a little bit more. Karma's a, a lot safer for the first pick. And now Mysterious Monkeys need to it, decide exactly how they're going to sort of work against that. It doesn't give it much away about the competition either, apart from the fact you're going to have this very utility-based um, support pick. Now, Broken Blade hovering the Riven, but I think that's more of a troll because obviously Broken Blade, fantastic Riven player. I mean, I could say that he could actually lock in Riven and then we've got a bit of a game on our hands. But I suspect through this rotation, if, you, if you're not willing to give up Syndra on the next rotation, you might be thinking about it here. And then you could lock in your AD carry given that you've seen support. Or you could return with a Zyra, uh, which would be just your support for support. And we've got the picks locked in. I like the Maokai pick. I think Zyra as well is really strong, as you say. Very, very powerful support. We saw her banned out in all of the first three games of the day. Maokai, in my opinion, is the best top laner apart from Poppy at the moment, and that is what's going to be locked in. Just works so well with Courage of the Colossus. I do think Nautilus is pretty good as well, but I agree. Um, you know, Maokai is definitely up there, especially synergizing so well with Courage of the Colossus in this situation. Very quick locks in Sona here on the second rotation. Yeah, not really that surprising as well. Caitlyn was an AD carry we saw a lot before the patch changed. Uh, I think Jin still being on the cards does sort of mess with that pick slightly. And then the Lee Sin lock in here for Zani. We said Lee Sin was very powerful when played properly, but we have seen more Rek'Sai, more release being picked up in the earlier games today. Yeah, so Rek'Sai has been sort of resurging as a top tier uh, jungle pick for a lot of competitive teams just because of how easy it is for you to move in and out of the enemy jungle uh, and get a lot of vision down with that tracker's knife and obviously utilize those plants to make sure you retain that burrow uh, and tunnel for ganking scenarios. You can go into the enemy jungle, set up vision, try and make a gank happen, um, and your cooldowns are retained. So yeah, I like the... Um, I like the Rek'Sai. I think it's definitely coming back in. Zani, we know, is just a ridiculously good Lee Sin player. So, like you said, I'm not surprised to have seen that. The We've got, a lot, we've got the lock-ins here, Sona. This is surprising. Yeah, the Varus pick is very surprising. We, we had a little bit of a discussion about this Varus earlier on today. Doesn't do as much as an AD carry as perhaps he could do, but can always be flexed into that mid lane as well. Rek'Sai for Abadaji. Uh, we'll, of course, go over to Kanani on that jungle. Well, Rek'Sai, in my opinion, with Courage of the Colossus, is probably one of the uh, S-tier junglers at the moment. Uh, yeah, no, I think so. I think so, sure. Courage of the Colossus, you unburrow, you get the massive amount of damage. If you unburrow into the midst of the enemy team, it's going to be fantastic. So, yeah, I think definitely top tier in that respect as well. Um, so, you've got double... Courage of the Colossus builds here, and obviously with the Zyra, you're not going to be lacking in damage at any point during the game. Another last rotation, the mid lane obviously getting locked in, as well as the top lane here, Sona. Yeah, locking in that Trundle for the top lane, where well, you'd expect it to be Trundle in the top lane. And then Crossman is taking the Twisted Fate here. Not one of the priority picks we tend to see in that mid, especially with Syndra left on the cards. So, so interesting that Syndra makes it all the way to final rotation. No one willing to pick her up. And I'm not entirely sure why. I genuinely don't think she has too many hard counters in that mid lane. And against Twisted Fate, you imagine that she's going to have a pretty you know, easy time about sort of in a 1v1 scenario. Uh, the only issue that she will find is that unless she's able to pressure those turrets, especially the tier 1, Twisted Fate will be able to sort of run across the map and do as he pleases. Now, we talked earlier about not seeing Varus in a competitive setting. We're going to get Varus on a, in a competitive setting. We're going to get Varus, who traditionally, long range, spend most of your time charging your um, piercing, piercing arrow. Now he's going to be moving to the AD carry position. We've got a little bit of change of heart at the, right, the last minute here, Sona. Yeah, it's going to be Cassio instead of that uh, Syndra that we were talking about. Cassio is still really powerful. Her and Rise are really the two hyper carries we see in the mid lane at the moment. And Into a Twisted Fate does allow you to stop him teleporting away as well with the Miasma. Exactly, um, but you know you don't expect him to be doing it in plain sight of you, so uh, we'll have to see. I think this is more to pressure him in lane. The problem is with Cassiopeia against Twisted Fate and Lee Sin is that you are very susceptible to getting locked up by the gold card uh, and getting a lot of ganks onto that, uh, that 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 particular onto that particular champion. So obviously, if Cassiopeia is looking to be as aggressive as possible, you try and cut him off with the Miasma, looking to land as many twin fangs. Then you get gold card, Lee Sin comes out the brush, and suddenly Cassiopeia is very vulnerable. So I think this Cassiopeia player is going to have to be very, uh, sort of, I guess, what's the word I'm looking for here? Reserved, or maybe sort of 
collected because you need to make sure you're maintaining vision. You need to make sure that you're, um, you're always keeping an eye on to where Lee Sin coming through because if you have Twisted Fate landing a card, Lee Sin makes a very easy gank in that scenario. That he does. The gold card lock-in is going to be vital here. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know what that last word was. I, uh, I ended up slurring like crazy. <laughs> It's all right, man. It's all right. I forgive you. I was just, I was getting, I was getting sort of distracted by these heart monitors that they have on. Oh, they yes. actually, they actually look fairly bulky. I was thought, I thought they might just have like a little, I don't know, like a little cheap patch that you put on that somehow monitors the heart rate. But they've actually got these big old chest straps like running around their heart. I mean, this is this is fa some fairly invasive, invasive equipment. Hopefully, not too invasive though, as we do get onto the Summoner's Rift. Eyes on you versus Mysterious Monkeys. It's for that spot in the Grand Finals. And it's the first game of this best of three. It's the Halb Final. Finale. Would it be Finale? I think it would be Finale. That sounds finale. French. That's true. But I, it's like, if you have a, if it's uh, ends in a knee, it's like, I, Aina, so Finale. Halb Finale. Do you have a I thought it was Finale. I, don't, I, don't, I didn't think it had the... Um... <laughs> Don't cap a pride me, chat. I I, I, th I don't think it has the inflection like a French um, oh, yeah. well, should, we, should we ask chat? Yeah, chat, we ask chat. If, if it's finale with an E at the end, type one. If it's just halb final, type two. I think Let's it's finale. Or I don't think it's finale or finale. No, finale. Yeah, finale. Because we'll you had finale's funken, which was the old Lux ultimate. Yeah, but that was with an S at the end. Finale. I think it's probably we something like that. Game. Yeah, we're back into the game. Thank goodness for that. And eyes on you, setting up a little bit. It's number one. It's finale. I was right, man. But you said um, finale. No, nah, originally I said finale, and then I changed it, didn't I? Yeah, I, I agree. That's why I was contesting. Well, I got it right. So eyes on you, trying to set up a five-man here in the bottom lane. Not going to be able to get too much out of this. It's Kekis and Yolopa won't be able to catch quick time out. I'm going to turn up the sound because I realise I turned it down a little bit. There we are. We should have in-game sounds up for you guys now. So anyway, we uh, we sometimes see these bot lane brush ganks, and they used to work, but now everyone's kind of got a little bit clued into them, so uh, they don't work as uh, as quickly as previously. Look at those uh, seeds that are getting set up in the lane there. There was three that could be spawned by Quick Timer, and uh, it just ended up that Uloper went and just basically stomped on all of them, so that won't be too heavily impacting the laning phase. We're going to see both junglers starting top side here, Sona, so we could see them meet either at bot lane or mid lane. Now, you might be wondering what these weird numbers on the screen are. The one with the squiggly line above it is the resting heart rate before they got onto the stage. And the second one is their current heart rate. So you can see quite big spikes for people like QuickTimer, whose heart rate has gone up by 50 beats a minute over just a, a starting of this game. Lots of people have quite high resting heart rates amongst these people. Actually, Abadaji trading well into Crossman here. So what you need to do on the Casio, your weakness always is you run out of mana pretty darn quickly if you're spanning out those Twin Fangs too much. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this is one of the semi-finals here between Eyes on You and Mysterious Monkeys. Mysterious Monkeys probably ever so slightly favoured based on recent form, but if you look at pedigree across all the seasons, Eyes on You have been right up there in the mix. The only team, however, in this finals tournament to have not won one of the five Meisterschaft Cups. Um, so they've always been there or thereabouts, but never actually won one of the Cups. And they also came second seed to Iguana Esports in the Group A, which was on the uh, 7th of November. Yeah, Apologise for the pause, guys. Of course, something going on at the venue. Admins will come across and deal with it in just a second. Yeah, so that you can see the ESL referee just standing there. Like, oh, what, what are you guys doing? Oh, you need me, oh where, where am I going? Oh, I've, I've stood up again. Apparently, there's something going on over here. Oh, I've put my hand up now. There's a, I have an issue. Many, many. Yeah, so we're just, we're just waiting for these guys to get sorted, get settled. I mean, this is a big stakes uh, environment for them. They need to make sure that they're playing at the absolute top of their game. You know, this is worth a Challenger Series qualification spot in the final and a whole chunk of money, too. So, like, we want to make sure these guys have everything absolutely perfect for them. We are back into the game. However, hopefully everything's sorted. Hopefully. Hopefully, indeed, Excounders, we are straight back into the action, as you say. Let's talk a little bit about this top lane matchup and about the team compositions in general. Firstly, Trondal into Maokai is a matchup we've seen a lot 
when this Maokai is being picked. Why do people prioritize getting that Trundle down? Trundle does very well into Maokai and Poppy, especially because you steal resistances. You go towards a uh, Hydra build of some sort. You're able to push those waves in very consistently against, to be honest, um, especially against Poppy, someone who does struggle to deal with waves that push against her heavily in the late game because you don't really have that sort of amount of wave clear. But against Maokai, it's a little bit easier. He will maintain a good, decent level of wave clear as the game progresses. But, uh, you know, in a dueling basis against the Trundle, especially post six, it'll be very difficult for Maokai to win those out. Definitely. Let's have a look at the uh, compositions as well, Excandra, as we have another pause coming out. Maokai, Bexai, Cassio, Varus, and the Zyra locked, of course, for Mysterious Monkeys. How, as a composition, does that really work out for them? So, could you just repeat the composition again? Sorry, I yawned while you're doing it, and I just couldn't, couldn't, couldn't listen. Wow, I didn't realize I wasn't that entertaining. Anyway, uh, Maokai and the rest of the picks that they have. Maokai, <laughs> Rexai, Cassio. Uh, it's the Varus and the Zyra to lock it out. Okay, so, you know, you have a lot of ability to siege onto turrets. You basically use that piercing arrow from the Varus, uh, try and put people down as low as possible. Then you have that tower dive coming through with the Rek'Sai and the Maokai. Lock people up. That means they're easily caught in the Varus ultimate, caught in piercing arrows, caught in all of the damage that Cassio can put down as well. They also have great counter engage. So uh, should an engage take place from their opposition, Eyes on You. They're able to turn things around with Cassiopeia and Malka. You know, the, just when you think Eyes on You are ready to retreat, having not got anything from the initial engage, you can turn things around. Uh, Malka turns it back over. You have the um, ultimate coming out from Varus, and then suddenly you have Cassiopeia slowing people down and chasing people down as well. So I guess this is where they're aiming to go, as well as the good neutral objective control that Cassiopeia provides. Uh, but generally, you've got you know just great counter engage coming out from from monkeys, and also when you get to a siege position, you can make tower dives happen as well. They do have that ocean drake on the cards, the first dragon. Not always prioritised by teams, but Cassio likes it quite a lot, as does the Maokai. So wouldn't be surprised if that uh, ocean is picked up pretty early by mysterious monkeys. Zani already looking for a first gank. This is a lot of what Eyes on You will be trying to do. They've got a great gank squad composition when you've got uh, the Trundle, the Twisted Fate and the Lee Sin all there, all trying to make these plays, but not quite able to get anything out of the mid lane, and both teams just settle back into farming in their lanes. What I wouldn't be surprised to see from Eyes on You is eventually d sort of devolve into a 1 3 1, where Crossman takes a side lane, Leandridge takes a side lane because he's able to split push versus Broken Blade effectively, um, and then you have the sort of the disengage from Karma and Lee Sin, keep the majority of that sort of three members safe against what's being thrown at them from anybody that's tried to defend from their siege. I think that that was kind of comp sort of way this composition could play out. Because if you go into a strict 5v5 team fight, you probably lose nine times out of 10 because you're going up against a, uh, a Zyra who's incredibly impactful in a, in a 5v5 team fight, uh, Cassiopeia and even a Varus to an extent. Whereas you're better at making picks with, with the Twisted Fate. You're better at sort of setting things up where you're not having to face people on a five on five basis. Uh, so I expected to see this potentially go to a one through one from eyes on you. Kanani's going to chase Zani, flash in there, Broken Blade will chase with the Twisted Advance, and Zani just has no escape, first blood over to the Mysterious Monkeys. Yeah, no mercy had there by Broken Blade and Konami, they just went straight in onto their prey, flash over the wall, you saw the heart rate from Kanani go up through the roof, up to 170, making that first blood play, excellently played by these guys. Great play by them, as you say. Now it's up to eyes on you to try and get back into the game. I do wonder how this Varus is going to fare as we get later on. Won't have the straight damage output that Caitlyn does at the moment. Doing pretty well with those piercing arrows and the strangle thorns coming out from the Zyra. But after we leave lane, you do have to worry about a Cassio getting on towards that back line. You have to worry about a Trundle as well, who can just chase the Varus down. Yeah, the Varus does have that ultimate and also the ability to slow people down, as well as uh, reduce healing coming out from that... Um, Frozen Domain from Leandro as well, obviously he managed to do that. Oh wow, Yulipa takes a lot of damage. Just goes down straight away as Quicktimer flashes in. Here's Twisted Fate looking for the Destiny on towards Quicktimer. Heal comes out, Quicktimer should fall. One more auto from Crossman, he has to flash in for it. Double G now, second stun card comes out, he has to flash away. And eyes on you are able to burn a couple of spells in response. He's used the Destiny and Crossman's flash. But they got the flash out of Double G, they got all of the summoners out of the Mysterious Monkey's bot lane. 
Yeah, really good destiny coming out from uh, Twisted Fate at that point. He had actually had got a huge wave pushing up towards Abba Danger, and uh, it meant that he was able to basically do it scot-free. He wasn't going to lose much pressure on that Tier 1. Very nice play from him, but he did have to burn both of his summoners in response as well. Because Quick Timer obviously having flashed in meant that he had nowhere to go, but it was very close to escaping, forcing out the, uh, the summoners coming out from Crossman. It means that his first Twisted Fate gank has worked out for him. He's gone towards a Sheen, so probably working towards the Lich Bane early on here. Lich Bane is something we used to see a lot on Twisted Fate. It allows you to push turrets really quickly, which means it, you kind of get the impression that eyes on you want a little bit of a split later on. Zani getting counter jungled by Kanani and Ebadaji, meaning that they are able to take away that blue. And denying blue from Twisted Fate isn't huge, but it's more about being able to get that over on towards your Cassio. Exactly, getting it onto Cassiopeia is more impactful than denying it from Twisted Fate. And Cassiopeia with blue is basically needed because she just spams so much mana. All this allows her to do is basically trade unequivocally with her uh, opposing laner. And he probably can't respond as readily as he'd like to, especially having needing to use blue cards for his own sustain. So, uh, yeah, I think this is good to get this over onto Abadanger, who's also picked up the cleanse, by the way. We didn't notice that. He knows he's going to be a target for Twisted Fate and Lee Sin, knows that he's going to need to cleanse those gold cards, and already picked it up in terms of summoner spells. So he's going to remain fairly safe thus far. Zani has finally hit level 6 now. Might be looking for wards, ganks in that mid lane, but there's wards spotting him out basically all over the jungle. And now, without having that Razor Beak unique passive we used to see, he's going to get caught out once again. Just no escape. Kanani gets in and doesn't allow the least in any room for movement. Wow, that's uh, again Kanani making some incredible plays, just shutting down Zani on this Lee Sin. Even though Zani's managed to farm heavily, Kanani's going to get this red buff. He's already got his tier map. He's got a little bit of health behind him too. I mean, he's just looking so dominant in the jungle versus opposing number. And by taking out the Lee Sin, you allow Abadanja to be able to push into this mid lane tier one consistently without threat. And every other lane is going to feel pretty safe trying to push up and make plays, especially that bot lane too. Quick timer on this uh, Zyra is going to want to be as aggressive as possible. Great directed cam coming out there. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Like, we're not doing the camera work ourselves. It looks like they're using director camera at the actual venue. So every now and again, the tournament realm director camera just freaks out. It's like, there's action everywhere. And dodges between like six lanes at once. It's amazing. Actually, it manages to dodge between two different games. That's how many uh, dodges it does. Superb. All the dodges. Here All the Kanani dodges. Crossman. Crossman doesn't have flash. Doesn't really have a way out of this one. As Mysterious Monkeys solidify the kill. Kanani has been doing absolute work in this early game. He's been fantastic so far, Sona. Setting up a lot of deep vision, maintaining his ability to pressure these lanes, going for the tower dive with Cassiopeia too. This is the, kind of the tower dive we talked about when we were talking about Mysterious Monkey's composition. Cassiopeia, as long as someone's tanking for her, is going to be insane in these kind of scenarios, especially if the, uh, the opposing number that they're trying to dive is staying towards that turret. And believe it or not, first turret of the game is very unusual, going towards... The mid lane. So you don't often see this, but this is going to be the mid lane turret going down first here for Mysterious Monkeys, as well as a massive CS gap opening in that mid lane for Cassiopeia. This could be eyes on you, just showing perhaps a bit of their inexperience at the top level, never being able to secure out a win in one of these competitive cups. And Mysterious Monkeys are really dominating them in the early game. Look at the CS differences in that mid lane. It's 25 difference between the farm there. With uh, Abadalshi just being so, so far ahead. Top lane is similar in favor of Leandrid on the Trundle. But you kind of expect Trundle just to outfarm a Maokai early on. Yeah, absolutely. It looks like Broken Blade is... Well, you know, he, 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 you totally expect that, like he said. You know, it's going to be a difficult situation for Maokai with the double Dorans to uh, you know, essentially do anything but just try and take the CS where he can versus Trundle, especially post-6. You know, he's way too much of a threat if he gets locked into a full-on engage of actually just going straight down to him in a 1v1, especially because you've now got Spectre's Cal there for Leandrid, as well as the Tiamat. Waves are just going to push towards Broken Blade naturally. He's got pretty good wave clear under the turret. He doesn't need to commit any further than that. It's going to be very difficult for Leandrid to actually freeze lane against him, so he has no need in any way, shape, or form to have to engage into a fight in the lane. He can just allow things to push towards him. That's exactly what he is doing. Eyes on you, 4,000, well, 3,000 gold behind at the moment. Zani's looking for a gank in the top lane. There's the pillar, but Broken Blade, pretty expectant that something's going on, as they don't have any vision on the Lee Sin at the moment. 
Meandred not really able to do much about it. Here's the Void Rush out from Kanani as well. He'll come up towards the top side of the map. Just to uh, counter gank anything that does happen. And once again, we have a pause coming out. Fourth of the uh, series. Didn't have any pauses in the last one. This one has been rife with them. Yeah, early on though, it's uh, a lot of early pressure going to the way of Mysterious Monkeys. They've looked very solid so far. Uh, eyes on you. And mainly down to the jungle. I think Kanani has been... Out pressuring Zani to a massive extent. Like, realistically, Zani has had little to no impact on this game thus far. And a lot of it has been down to Kanani's ability to counter, ju counter jungle. He caught out Zani looking to make a gank in the top lane and combine with the Malka to pick up that first blood. And, uh, you know, like you said, a lot of these lanes, especially that mid lane, without jungle pressure is going to go naturally in the favor of Cassiopeia. And even if Twisted Fate is trying to roam around the map, he's now lost that tier one turret. So if he ends up roaming to bot or top with his ultimate, how much more is he going to lose because of that mobility of... Kanani being able to link up with Cassiopeia, they're going to have applying huge amounts of pressure to these turret early on. Uh, if any of you are interested in the Grand Prix, by the way, uh, I believe Lewis Hamilton is still in first. He is, he is. Uh, it's just ahead of Rosberg. And actually, he um, quite recently, uh, Mercedes Radio went to him, you need to speed up the pace a little bit because Rosberg was getting caught by Vettel. And Hamilton was just like, yeah, I'm comfortable where I am. Thank you very much. So he's deliberately trying to slow the race down so that Vettel overtakes Rosberg, because if Vettel overtakes Rosberg, uh, Hamilton wins the, the championship. Otherwise, Rosberg gets it as it stands. So it's a, it's a very tight one. I love that from Lewis Hamilton. <laughs> He's saying, no, nope, no, nope, I want to win this. I want to win this championship race. As we so just saw a little bit of traditional sports thrown into the broadcast, guys, as we're waiting for this to restart, which it has. Back into the action once again. And at the moment, Leandri's just saying, guys, I'm comfortable where I am. Might not be comfortable for long, though, because here comes Kanani with the knock-up onto Leandrid. Twisted Fate going to come in as well with the Destiny. Has joined the fray. On towards Kanani. Stuns him up. That's one dead. They're looking for Broken Blade. Second great Twisted advance into the flash as well. And with the cross is going to go for the chase. Abadaji head to find Gaze onto Zani. There's one. Can he pick up two? He should be able to take Leandrid down as well. Will flash away, but Abadaji goes for the chase. And it ends up being a two-for-two two exchange with both the mid laners getting all of the kills. Great roam from Cassiopeia there, knowing that they could potentially turn things around. How difficult it would be for Kanani and Broken Blade to go down to a fairly low damage gank coming up from Crossman at this point in time. He doesn't actually have his uh, doesn't actually have his um, Lich Bane yet, so he was able to roam out quite nicely. A two for two off the back of a TF gank is fantastic for uh, for Mysterious Monkeys. They are not going to be too displeased with that, and the fact that Crossman has lost his Summoner spells again. Meaning that Abadaji has that potential to pressure the mid lane once more. But with that tier 1 going down, I would not expect or what would not be surprised to see more and more roams come out of Abadaji because the more you can pressure onto that tier 1 and tier 1, that tier 1 and tier 1? That tier 1 in the top and bot lane, the, the better you can start to pressure the map as a whole. And uh, I think actually Jung uh, the, the, the Drake could be a real point of call right now for Mysterious Monkeys. I don't think they're going to be contested too heavily by it. Uh, so, yeah, I just want to say that... Um... Actually, Rosberg just won the Formula 1, won the championship as he came in second, so well done by him. Uh, and we are going to get back into <laughs> to, to League of Legends games. Um, well, so, well done, Rosberg. Well done, Rosberg. Well done. You did really well. At the moment, both these teams fighting off for their position in the grand finals to face up against the Guana Esports. Winner of that is into the Challenger Series qualifiers, which is the stepping stone you need sometimes as a team to really push yourself into gear into a, a higher gear at least. Corrupt, chain of Corruption on towards Kekis. He's trying to trade into Double G, but just cannot escape. Lockdown for days. The Mysterious Monkeys, seven and three up now. Looking to start to close out this game pretty soon as they'll push for that turret in the bot lane as well. Blast Cone comes out. Kanani getting away from Zani. Once again, here comes Abadaji. There's the Dragon's Rage. Flash away as well. Zani just hasn't been able to do anything on this Lee Sin. Yeah, he's been pressured so heavily, especially because a lot of vision control has come down onto that red side jungle as well for Mysterious Monkeys. Like, there's been nowhere that Lee Sin can do to impact in terms of the, the, the mid lane and the bot lane, really. And those are kind of the high impact lanes that Lee Sin would have wanted to try and pressure in. And all of that has just been completely dom dominated by Kanani. A lot of people were talking about the, um, the heart rate in chat. What they did is they took the heart rate uh, of the player before. Uh, we have a gank here, actually. I'll talk about it afterwards. Mid lane tower will go down. Teleport did come into the bottom lane as well. Looks like it was actually cancelled out. So yeah, as you say, they took the resting heart rate, which is the number with the squiggly line above it, just before they got onto the stage. And then the second one is a real-time heart rate monitor to see just how stressed these players are getting while playing the game. Twisted Fate. Destiny comes in. Abadaji should be the target. Here they go. Petrifying Gaze doesn't connect. Stun on towards the Cassio. But Crossman is just melted away. Cassio dies as well. 
It's going to be a one for two trades. You have to expect a great flash away, though, by Kanani. will keep him alive. And in a 4v2, they trade it one for one. Yeah, Kanani has got his Cinder Hulk finished right now, which is more than I could say for what Zani has got onto the board. Uh, but unfortunately, it hasn't made him the tankiest member in the world just yet. But he does escape with a sliver of life. And Kanani will start to back and clear some more of his uh, jungle camps on his own side jungle. But again, brilliant trade for Crossman and Abadaji at this point in time. You're going to be pretty happy that uh, Cassio takes a one for one in that situation. Four and one on Cassiopeia. Morella Nomicon finished. Abyssal Scepter finished as well. Has already got that tier stacking up too. So in a fantastic position for Cassiopeia. We've seen Cassiopeia banned quite a lot in the previous series. Maybe we're starting to see why because Abadaji really running riot with this pick. Does do a lot of work when utilized effectively, but can be shut down in the early game. We just didn't quite see Zani getting the ganks off. He would have liked this Lee Sin pick, not paying dividends at all. Crossman comes in towards the bottom lane. Double G stunned up. Yellow for looking for the slow as well. Pissing out with the wrong way, but the hail of ours will slow them in their tracks. There's the strangled thorns as well. Stops the engage from eyes on you. They're, they're trying to pull the trigger, but every time they do, it turns out they've got blanks in the chamber. And they're not able to connect with any of these ganks. Absolutely. Zani and uh, Yulopa just trying to clear away some of these jungle camps while they can. Zani kind of basically playing with scraps at this point in time. He's been really pressured heavily by his opponent number. And he's going to clear out all of those Krugs. Take that gold and start to do something with it. He's not even finished a jungle item yet. That warrior still hasn't been finished by him. So uh, he's a long way off having a super impactful uh, sort of item spike in the game. He's going to be Going towards potentially Mercury Trades or Hex Drinker, that build that we saw a lot of at Worlds for Lee Sin was that he went towards Hex Drinker after finishing his jungle item uh, against the Cassiopeia, sorry, against the Cassiopeia Malkai and Zyra. I would not be too surprised. But then you need Trundle to take on that tank line role. So Trundle going towards the Titanic Hydra with only a Spectre's Cal and Mercury Trades is not, also not going to be the tankiest guy in the world. So, uh, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of questions thrown up as to where these build paths are going to be going. It's an odd one indeed, especially when you see new champions being, well, not new champions, but champions being played slightly differently. And with the item changes in this patch, we are seeing a lot of uh, changes in the way people itemize. The Zyra and Karma builds tend to be kind of the same, except for that redemption. And actually, Quick Time's going to catch out Ulopa here. No escape for the Karma as Quick Time takes his second kill of the game. Looking to. Uh basically ward up to give some security to Kekis there, but they do end up picking up a pick, getting a pick there. And they will end up pushing towards this top lane tier one. Great rotations coming out from Mysterious Monkeys. They're now 6k gold in the lead. Look at this from Broken Blade. He's being forced out by Leandra. Leandra is just able to do that with his ultimate. He's on such a short cooldown that he can use it to take a trade, try and pressure as much as possible. He's actually going to call for Zani to potentially go for a tower dive here. Not totally sure you want to do that against the Maokai, but we'll see how that transpires. Especially with the ultimate just down from Leandrid. Yeah, I don't think they're going to do it. Cosmo has to flash away from Kanani in the mid lane. Kanani has done such work on this Rek'Sai. Like Ganky time and time again. Perfect positioning. And because he puts the threat in the mid lane, they're going to lose the turret, turret up towards that top side as well. Should be pretty easy for the Zyra and the Ash to take. Here comes the Destiny as well. Stun dodged away with the Twisted Advance. And eyes on you, they invest so much, but they just can't do anything. Time that was and time again, it's the story of their gags. Such a fantastic Twisted Advance and Broken Blade to dodge out the uh, Twisted Fate stun right there. I mean, this is just fantastic. Now they're going to potentially turn it around onto Leandro. The kick comes through, Sona. There's a Casio on the way, though. Twisted Advance onto Leandro. Here's the Petrifying Gates as well. Zani locked up by it. Abadaji just trading so quickly on this Casio. Keeps himself alive as well. Gets the double. Gets the triple. And the Mysterious Monkeys are absolutely dominant. They're going bananas. Oh, baby, a triple for Cassiopeia. That snake is slithering and poisoning, and she is on fire right now. I'm going to give big credit to Abadad. He's looked fantastic. His roams have always been great. And perfect placement of Miasma there caught the very end of Crossman. Great interruption on Kekis into the Strangled Thorns along with the Grasping Boots and tries to flash away, but Double G wants a double kill. And we won't quite get it as Yulopa does escape into his base. Have to say that Mysterious Monkeys have had a menagerie of ways to deal with eyes on you. Yeah, this game is very, very much in favor of Mysterious Monkeys. Now they are swinging easily from objective to objective. And uh, it will be a very short time before they potentially end this one out, especially with the way that Abadaji is going to scale and also double G. You know, people often forget how well Varus scales as both an AD caster 
and actually in some respects as an AD carry. I mean, he does have percentage magic health damage built into his kit. The more of those stacks you build up, the more damage you uh, deal in terms of percentage max health onto your opponent um, by proccing it with an ability. So, you know, I, actually as an AD carry, Varus scales not too bad himself, and people often forget that because he's often relegated to a pure AD caster. So you've seen, you've seen it quite regularly here, especially with Essence Reaver and the... Um, Essence Reaver and the Runin's Hurricane, you know, you, you do have the ability as an AD carry to scale quite nicely. And honestly, the longer this game goes, the less I actually favor eyes on you. I don't think they have um, things that suit full-on 5v5 team fights, and they could get locked into that situation where they may be forced to go into a 1v1 split push, but they can't 1v1 split push when, to be honest, your Cassiopeia will just dumpster Crossman in every sort of 1v1. Crossman, you know, he tried to get some good early ganks off, was in the right place at the right time, but just wasn't able to execute quite well enough. The macro play from Eyes on You has been strong in the majority of cases, or at least strong enough, but they just haven't executed the kills or executed the ganks as well as they would have liked to, which means that they have fallen behind. And when you fall behind against a Cassiopeia and a Varus, you're just going to get poked out time and time again. Here comes the Destiny as well, just to see what Mysterious Monkeys were doing, and they don't even need to be that worried about it. No, so it looks like Twisted Fate is going towards a Rabadon's death cap, which basically he's saying my only way of, of probably impacting these team fights or impacting anything is to be able to pick someone off with pure burst. So I've got the burst part of my kit, which is the Lich Bane. Now I need to augment that with the uh, the, the Rabadon's death cap. So what he's saying is if he can catch out quick timer double G or Abadaji, maybe Abadaji a little bit harder with the cleanse. But if I can catch out any of these guys. You know, I will be able to burst them with the uh, the Rabadon's Deathcap and the Lich Bane more readily than I would be able to if I prioritized something like an Abyssal Scepter, which would make sense, obviously, with the Cassiopeia, the Malkai, and the Zyra in play. But for him, he knows that that's just too slow. His only sort of win condition as a, as a Twisted Fate at this point is to make some sort of pick and blow someone up instantly, and that's what a, uh, a Rabadon's Deathcap is going to do for him. And Mysterious Monkeys will start up the Baron. No real way here for Eyes on You to stop it. With only one turret remaining in that tier 2 line and the rest of them being the inhibitor towers, you have to think Mysterious Monkey should be able to take quite a lot off this Baron push. Absolutely, and they're going to be able to uh, take that. Might be able to move into a, a split push scenario where they're going to be forcing Leandrid back with Broken Blade, but a full-on 5v5 is actually more preferable for Mysterious Monkeys here. They don't actually have to split their focus if they don't want to. They could go 1 and 4. They could maybe even have Rek'Sai splitting in the side lane with that um, Tiamat able to just clear waves very, very readily. But honestly, they've got a very good tower dive composition. I don't know why they'd want to not, or why they want to stray away from that. Maybe because of the uh, the Caitlyn traps and the Twisted Fate stun. Feels like they're just taking it a bit slow now. Everyone is just backing off here without capitalizing. They're going to try and fi finish some uh, item spikes or at least pick up some big items like the BF Sword we've just seen completed for Double G. Double G is in such a strong position. Essence Reaver, Runans to proc all of those light stacks. Almost forgot what they were called there for a second. Infernal Drake has been started here. Eyes on you're going to look for the steal. Zani already in the pit, but there's just nothing he can do. He's taken out. We've got no real HP. It just melts away. They take the kill on the lead. They take the Infernal Drake as well. And they're looking to take the first game of this best of three. Mysterious Monkey is an unstoppable force in the face of eyes on you. Absolutely, now they're gonna push onto this bot lane here. This is gonna be basically surrendered by eyes on you. Mysterious monkeys looking ever stronger. I wouldn't be surprised to see them try and finalize this with a tower dive push, double dead man's plate onto uh, the Maokai and onto the Rek'Sai. So, you know, if they can lock someone down of high importance, that person's probably going to die very readily. There we go. There we go, straight onto Kekas, locked away as you say. Pedophile gaze in as well from Abadaji. Doesn't really mind who he's doing the damage to as long as he's getting those twin banks sunk into his prey. Leandrin, the front line for eyes on you. They've only got three members left to try and survive through this push. Inhibitor's gonna go down. All the Mysterious Monkeys are looking for the win. They've got Baron buff minions. They've got two cannons in the back line and Mysterious Monkeys on the first Nexus Tower. Here comes Broken Blade once again in. Abadaji just melts through Yolopa. Almost does get the kill onto Zani as well, on towards that fountain. With the minions coming in, the last Nexus Tower will fall. The Undred's not gonna be able to complete that teleport and this will be the Nexus going down as well. Mysterious Monkeys will take the first game of this best of three and they look unstoppable they've looked super dominant compared to that previous games that we saw where it was kind of long and drawn out and 
going towards the late game. Mysterious Monkeys finished very readily in 24 minutes. And also they exploited the fact that there was little to no wave clear right there for uh, Eyes on You. Like if they were able to take out Caitlyn or take out Twisted Fate, their siege was unparalleled because there was nothing stopping these minion waves crashing into their turrets. You know, we said just before that tower dive happened, pretty much expect them to go and tower dive. Like I pretty much expect them to just walk up, take that tower dive opportunity to catch out someone of importance. If the double dead man's plate just wrecks the person that they'd sort of lock onto. They probably win the game from that position. They did exactly that. Played their composition perfectly, Sona. That they did great play by them all round. How do you adapt, though, if your eyes on you for the next game? Is there something you can do to actually stop the uh, the push coming out from Mysterious Monkeys? They just look Yeah, I mean, look, look you, you, had the op you had the opportunity to take Victor. You could have taken Oriana. You, but you took Twisted Fate. And Twisted Fate relies on getting your laners ahead in other lanes. Like, otherwise, your ultimate becomes kind of useless in a lot of respects. And... Just wasn't able to do that. And unfortunately, Twisted Fate himself is going to struggle in a sort of way player scenario and also in a tower dive scenario. There he is. Well, we'll be back in just a couple of minutes after this break. Right, make sure you stay tuned, guys, because we are going to come back with the second game of this best of three. Yeah. 